friends, welcome back to another episode of Sisters and Friends Podcast. Y'all, this one is, I'm, I'm actually scared. I'm scared because I have taken this too far already by inviting my very best friend on the podcast. So whatever happens in the next 40 minutes or so, just prepare yourself because there might be a lot of stuff you might have to turn your brain cells off to listen to, but there's also going to be some stuff you need to turn it on and hear because this girl has some wisdom. I mean, she is a well of wisdom. She knows scripture more than most people that I know. That's, that's fat, probably more than anyone that I know um, our age. I mean, she loves the word. She breathes the word. She sings the word, lives the word, writes the word, all the things. And so, yeah, we're pretty goofy and silly, but also uh, we are two people who love Jesus with all their heart. And so I hope that you get some out of this. It's going to be a great conversation. Welcome, Lainey Renee. Thank you podcast. for having me. Lainey it's Renee. It's my greatest Pickens. honor. Pickens. Pickens. I never really like, use Pickens anymore. You don't? You just <laughs> <laughs> Lainey Renee. Lainey Renee. So we were just talking and laughing because we have like a million names for each other. So I'm like, okay, say Lainey, not Lenny, not Looney. Not Linda, because I call you many things. So we were kind of reminiscing on all the names that we've had. And it originally started with Big Dip. I was Big Dip, and you were Lil Dip. Lil Dip and Big Dip. That started because... Our friendship necklaces. We had friendship necklaces. (laughs) We also had fake boyfriends. They were this big. Okay, but okay, context, context. We did have have real boyfriends. Because we were just, both of us went through a breakup, and we were like, we were heartbroken. Uh, We just met. We'll tell you that yeah. story, but we had literally just met right fresh off of two breakups, and we became best friends so fast, and then it was like three weeks after we met, and we were, I think I was trying to like cheer you up or something, and, <laughs> and you got me a little boyfriend. Yeah, I got you a little boyfriend, I was like, hey, it's okay, look, just a little dude with your boyfriend. <laughs> that was so funny. And then we saw our friendship necklaces, and it was like the Big Dipper and the yeah. Little Dipper, and so we bought it, and we got each other Big Dip and Little Dip, and, and then, done. Yeah. That lasted for a while. And then we moved on to Cinda, Linda, Sudi. Sudi and Looney. You know, we need new nicknames for each other. Yeah, like, well, now we're moms. We're like moms. We need a little bit mature mm. name, you know? Linda and Cinda is pretty We mature. could be Big Mama and Little Mama. <laughs> Perfect. Big Mama and Little Mama. Wait, what was the name that, um, what was the name that Ronnie was going to call me? It was oh, like Susu. Susu. Yeah. I'm Susu. You're, and you're Susu. Lulu. And I'm Lulu. Okay, that's right. No, no, it's Lulu that's cute. and Susu. <laughs> that okay, was... so our daughters, if you don't know, because we're going to reference them probably a lot, obviously my daughter's Honey. Um, most of y'all probably know that who listen to this podcast. And then Lainey's daughter's name is Ronnie. And Ronnie and Honey are the cutest. They're so cute. We're biased. And if you're a mom, I'm so sorry to tell you that they're the cutest little but girls But we have the cutest ever. kids. <laughs> And they're awesome, and um, it's so fun because now they're both walking. I know. I know. Ronnie, whenever Ronnie saw Honey today, she literally walked up and just gave her a big old kiss on the lips. That's so cute. Yeah. I literally saw, like, Honey taking off and then Ronnie following her, and I was like, oh, boy, that's trouble. Yeah. Like, I don't know if Honey should be the leader of this friendship yet. I already feel that way about Ronnie. I was thinking on the way here, I was praying over her. I was like, you be a good example. <laughs> You be kind. You are gentle. We just have to remember no grabbing ears. All no grabbing the stuff eyes. We did and give them grace because we did yeah. some stupid stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, so I took this to Instagram because obviously I wanted us to have a conversation. I've interviewed you before, but I wanted us to have a conversation because people are really interested in our friendship and they have a lot of questions for us. And so on Instagram, when I posted, I got all over the map questions like funny questions because we are pretty goofy like I mentioned and then I also got like super serious questions because we've been vulnerable Mm -hmm. about stuff that we've gone through so I thought we'd Mm -hmm. start with some fun questions just so people can get like a picture of our friendship but the first question was what is your favorite memory of each other and I thought we could take this two ways one being like our actual favorite memory and then one being our funniest funniest okay are you going first am I going first okay I can go first for funniest Okay, but, and then I'll go, okay. and I'll go sweet. Okay, and then, and then you go sweet, sweet, and then I'll go funny. funny. Deal. Okay, so this is actually really funny because, like, I could go a million different ways with this because we have so many funny stories. But I'm gonna go with this one because this was before I really knew you, which is why it makes it funnier. Because like once we knew each other, we probably should have and maybe could have been embarrassed by like. Half but it the things we yeah. did, but it wasn't because we knew yeah. each other. Yeah. Okay, so when Lainey and I first met, we met on Winter Jam tour, and she was backup dancing, hip hop, like so cool. I know, flex. It's like one of those like um, 
me and Christian always laugh because we go, weird flex, but okay. Yeah. That's not even a weird flex. That's like a true flex. Like, you were a hip-hop dancer, and I was like, I want to be her friend. So I became her friend, but you were going through a serious breakup at the time, and that guy was on the tour. And y'all dated for five years. Awkward situation. Not only was he on the tour, but y'all danced together. Mm -hmm. Really awkward. <laughs> okay, so I was like, how can I be a good friend? And one of the things I was like, I have to do every night is I was going to like go to the ramp that you were scooting down because Lainey was wearing these skates on the last dance that they did. And she would have to scoot down. And I didn't want this guy to have to help her up because... Who wants to hold the guy's hand that you just broke up with? Like, no one. So I was like, I'm going to go down there so I can Which hold your Which really is really sweet. This is sweet input. It was yeah. all sweet. It was all really sweet. Like, kind-hearted. I remember like, I would listen for the last of the girl who you were singing for a song, and I would, like, sprint there. And so I get there one night, and you're scooting down the ramp, and I would never forget your face. You were like, who? Like, it was like a, like, oh, like, something just happened. I was like... Are you okay? Are you okay? You're like, something's in me. Something, something just happened. Something just happened. There's a nail. There's a nail. Like, you didn't know what was happening. I don't even, did you even I didn't know, know what, it, what was. it was? I just knew I was sliding down and I, something had, you know, went into went in the butt. My bus. So, so she's like, freaking it was just out. like, what do I do? Yeah, so she's like, freaking I was out. in roller skates. Like, it was just not but her, the moment. Like, she's like, kind of panicky you know because like something is in your butt and like the security <laughs> guard is right there and he's trying to help you but you're like no like don't look it gets to my butt and then i'm like all right come on and i like grab her hand and like we're literally <laughs> running while she's in skates i'm like dragging down, her down, down the, the arena like the arena. Yeah. and okay keep in mind like there's like over 100 people on winter jam so there's <laughs> multiple people backstage watching us run while we're both screaming and i'm dragging her in skates <laughs> to the room and then she's like just gets in the room and I don't know her super well and she's just like get it out get it out and I pulls your pants down and there is a nail in her butt and I'm like oh my gosh and I'm just thinking to myself like what do I do because you know in movies sometimes you're like not supposed to get the thing out because then it like bleeds like crazy or if it was rusted like or if it's all rusted, things, like, yeah. like there was like 50% yeah, yeah. that was like don't pull this nail out of her butt and then there was 50% that was like Pull the nail out, but you were like, "Get it out!" Get I did not say no that's what's other so choice. I did not even think about it. No, and and also within that, you told me to take a picture of it. So I'm like taking a picture of her butt. I don't even know her super well yet, and I'm like, "Here is your photo," and then, and then I get it. I'm like. That's what it looks like. And I'm like, no, it doesn't look that bad. It yeah. doesn't look that bad. For it a was moment. because of the flash. <laughs> it doesn't look that bad. So then I grab oh the nail gosh, I'm red. and I pull it out. <laughs> Long story short, we get the nail out. You were fine. You were up to date on your shots, right? No. <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure I called like the local, like whatever, whatever it's called, like um, Care Now, and I was like. Um, <laughs> did you get a shot? No, we decided not to. I flew home and then I got it checked out. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had to look at it. Oh, and yeah. And they were like, it's good. You were fine. You're, not, you're fine. It wasn't yeah. that big of a deal. But it was, was just good. like the funniest situation. It was so funny. It was like high panic alert and like we didn't know each other yeah. and it like involved a butt. And it was. Just... Maybe that's why though. People are always like, how did y'all become friends I so think fast? It was that. I think it was that. When I look back <laughs> on the timeline of our friendship, I really needed a friend. Because in that to be moment. honest, like, I always say this, like, we're really crazy around each other, but I'm not like that around other people. Mm -hmm. like, I'm really not. I mean, no. I have other friends that I'm goofy around, but there's like a different level with you. And, you know, I don't know how to recreate that with someone else. Like, I just don't think you can. <laughs> but I think it's like, it, it's those moments that yeah, make That we've you, built yeah. upon that just, yeah. It is. And, like, granted, we were on a tour together for three months 46 cities and yeah. we literally like traveled america together for three months to yeah. get to know each other that's a very unique situation yeah you don't really do that you don't really yeah. get to know someone like that I'm going to be honest with y'all, my tendency is to wake up and check my phone just like everyone else I'm sure goes through every morning. And it's not even an active choice, it's more like a habit. And as you know, it's not the best way to start your day, even if it's all good things that you're seeing. I mean, I could be putting so much more in my mind before the day starts, and that's why I love the Abide app. So whether it's to start your day or end your night or bring you peace during an anxious day, Abide is the number one Christian meditation app. Abide users report less stress, less anxiety, and 
and less depression and even better sleep. And I can say from personal experience with this app, that is true for me. Um, instead of mindless scrolling, why not dwell on God's word through one peaceful app? I mean, it's really incredible. It's so simple. And a bio meditation start at two minutes long and cover all topics that you need, like overcoming anxiety, managing stress, addictions, and recovery, finding forgiveness, and so much more. What I love about Abide is that it's impactful for me, Christian, and Honey. They also even have Abide bedtime stories that are just so restful. So join the millions of Abide users today, including Grammy Award-winning singers, church leaders, moms, dads, and college students. For a limited time only, our listeners can get a 25% off of a premium subscription when you visit abide.co slash Sadie. So get started now with 25% off a premium subscription by downloading the Abide app at abide.co slash Sadie, and you'll get additional stories and meditations and premium music, soothing sounds, and more. So support this show and get 25% off by going to abide.co slash Sadie. That's A-B-I-D-E dot co C-O slash Sadie to download the app, the Abide app, and get 25% off your premium subscription. We literally Uh spent every day together every hour breakfast well we yeah. missed breakfast but lunch we dinner <laughs> midnight snack yeah we <laughs> it's all things no we joke. gained like 30 pounds we literally did i'm not like that's not a joke y'all we ate a whole thing of halo top individually every night. not not we didn't share, we didn't share. <laughs> individually we didn't every start sharing night. until like way later yeah we were because like, we realized maybe we we're should share on the pounds like that was bad Oh gosh, that was hilarious, but it was fun. It was an honest moment, though, because I still remember that one photo shoot. <laughs> All the pictures were from behind, and you were like, Lane, <laughs> do you remember that? Yes. You were like, your, was like, your oh. butt looks really big. Yeah, I was like, mine did, mine did ouch, too. Mine did ouch, too. that hurt, but yeah. I needed it. I mean, I maybe really we needed, needed to see each other I needed like that, because we needed to help ourselves. I mean, we were, but it was just yes. like Halo Top, Pop Tarts, just stupid stuff. Yeah, we weren't making wise decisions. We weren't. We were doing really good in our like spiritual, spiritually life. Spiritually great. But physically, we weren't. We Worse. weren't working out. Not we weren't all. eating well. No. You know, all the things. Yeah. And we'll get to that later. Yeah, we'll talk oh, about okay. body image. Yeah, we'll talk about body image. <laughs> okay. Do you have a funny memory you're thinking of? Okay, funny memory. Um, so the first thing that came to my mind was I'm so whenever um. So Sadie had this like reoccurring issue and she couldn't figure out how to help it or oh how gosh. to make it go away. And oh um and so <laughs> at the time <laughs> The first like, I don't even know how to tell this. this I don't even know how to tell this. I don't even know how to tell this. So um anyways, I was in a season of really loving frozen grapes. <laughs> frozen grapes were like my thing and so oh I had gone to the store and I had got a fresh batch of grapes and yes, put them in the freezer yes, you did. and yes, you did. I came home and I was looking for my grapes and I couldn't find them and I was <laughs> like what happened to my frozen grapes and I go ask Sadie because we like shared food and everything in the house yeah. and she just starts laughing <laughs> I was so embarrassed it's one of those moments where like you do something and you hope no one ever finds this out. And you're totally perfectly okay with never telling anyone until you die. Yeah. It was that moment. So, do you want to tell everyone your issue? Okay, and okay. Tell- so, here's the thing. Okay, if you do not like bathroom talk, like, like literally yeah. turn this off. Or yeah. skip the next three minutes. Yeah. Like, if farts minutes. aren't funny. If farts aren't funny, like, this is going to go talk is way not for you. over your head. Like, way Maybe too Maybe just far. fast forward, like, five minutes. If, also, if you're my mother-in-law, do not listen to this. Like, mother-in-law, grandma, <laughs> like, just skip over. You will not believe that I'm about to say what I'm about to say. But, hey, this is Sisters and Friends. Yeah. This is a different kind of podcast. Like, we're saying the stuff that no one says. And I'm not, like, yeah, okay, all stuff. So, it's the raw truth. I don't know if anyone out there has ever had a hemorrhoid. Okay. <laughs> I can't even say it without laughing. But they're not fun, okay? And they're probably way more common than anyone wants to admit. Well, nothing was working for me, okay? Nothing in the CVS aisle was getting it done. So I was like, okay. Well, I'm going to do a little at-home remedy. And uh, let's see what we got here. Furs and grapes. <laughs> I cannot. I can't breathe. And from then on, now I've just never seen frozen grapes. Yeah, the same. I've never. I've never. Actually my whole family them. hasn't either. They all. They all know too. They all know. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay. And 
Look, this is actually a good piece of advice. This is whoa, that's good off tape, like unscripted. This is like really good advice though. If you have a problem like that, and it's not getting the job done, like just go buy some grapes, save the money, and go buy some grapes. It actually does help. And yeah, that's all you need to know. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Okay, that's actually really good though because this is showing you why we're so close. It's because we know everything about each other. And I think when people think like, they know everything about each other. Like they're thinking like oh, all the worst things in our life we've ever done, and that's true too. Like yeah. we know like our testimonies as well. But it's also like knowing the silly stuff. Yeah. Like I think that's what makes life fun. Yeah. And I mean, Lady and I would literally I actually had a question about this, which we'll get to. But somebody asked about how like we got past letting acne like get us down, and mm-hmm. how do we overcome it? Because I talked about like struggling with acne, mm-hmm. and you didn't ever really have bad skin or anything. But I remember like. Literally would go to bed at night and I would be sitting there like, <laughs> why is my skin like this? And I get so mad and like you were just there through all of it. So we saw each other in really like vulnerable states. It Aww. makes me laugh, it, but it's sweet, like yeah. it's true. And now like you know we've overcome those silly things that have to do with just growing up. Yeah. But now we're in our own silly stages of like the humbling of parenthood. It's very humbling and all the stuff we both had yeah. poop and pee all over us <laughs> and multiple times in the past year. Yeah. Spit up whatever babies crying we had to leave lunches with people like sorry it's so no true it's not gonna oh. cooperate so this yeah. like that happened with y'all literally the other yeah. day i was like gosh i'm so like you feel this sense of like almost embarrassment and you're like oh why am i embarrassed yeah, like I am. i've had to catch myself like in moments like that sorry not yeah, trying to no. get too serious no it's true I like <laughs> it's that. true that, that's yeah. a good point it's like life it's humbling a lot of times and I think yeah. we, our first instinct is to get embarrassed but the truth is like we all have those situations come up just like yeah. I said like okay I know that's embarrassing and no one would ever say that on camera like I just did but how many people go through that like mm-hmm. so many people and like we get embarrassed for mm-hmm. the things that like aren't really that embarrassing mm-hmm. you know like that's when our kid true. I've done something silly and we're like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. there's nobody cares. Yeah, you yeah know? that day you're like oh my gosh I so get it like oh yeah you didn't even think about it and Not I was like I, in my head, I was yeah. like, oh, gosh, like, honey's being so good. Yeah, no, <laughs> really, oh, gosh. Honey, be good, it's you just know. A game. Yeah. yeah, and, like, giving yeah. ourselves the grace that we give other people, yeah. you know, just, yeah. like, reminding ourselves of that. Well, um, obviously, we have a lot of favorite memories together, and that might take too long to even go through, but I think one of my favorite memories, mm-hmm. just with you, is literally just every night we spent living together. I mean, we just had so much fun. We just kept life fun, and I think that yeah. that is a actual intentional thing you have to do in life. I've realized, like, after moving away from you, mm-hmm. and me and Christian are really fun people, but, like, you got to keep it fun. I agree. You got to, like, yes. choose to dance. Like, yes. you got to choose to turn on yeah. the music sometimes. And it's not always just going to be fun. And we yeah. were really intentional about that. Yeah. And maybe we didn't realize it at the time that we were being intentional, but we were. That is so true. I literally told Clayton this morning on the way here, I was like, this is so good for me because I need to, like, where I'm so excited, my soul is so excited because I know when we're together, we have so much yeah. fun and like we laugh so hard mm-hmm. and I need, not yeah. that, like you said, not that me and Clayton don't have fun, but like there's another level mm-hmm. of like, I can feel myself like, yeah. when I see you I like enter into that like childlike yeah. joy and yeah. like goofiness and it does, like a part of me is like coming back to yeah. life, you know? Yeah. And I feel like friends like that, like, mm-hmm. They're just so, I don't have anyone. It's hard to find. I, mean, I have great friends. Yeah. Like, but I feel like there's certain people that you just kind of like. It's hard to find. Yeah. I'm realizing how to find that with other friendships. Yeah. And I am finding that. Like, yeah. I have so many incredible friends and we're so goofy. But it takes time and it takes you being willing to be. I was going to say, it's me. It's It's, it's you. me yeah. letting down that wall. Of like, okay, yeah. I can like be my real goofy self right now and. You yeah. don't accept me. You know? Exactly. And so that's the thing, like, for those listening, like, you don't have to go on a big tour with somebody. You don't have to spend yeah. every day with somebody. It's really not that. Like, essentially what we're saying is it's literally being the person that does the funny thing and let mm-hmm. someone into it. Like, yeah. it's being the person that says, like, oh, my gosh, my face is breaking out, like, crazy. Like, this is ridiculous. Let's yeah. go figure out something funny to do and, yeah. like, figure it out. Like, remember, I think I put, like, egg whites on it one time. Like, you know, why not? Let me just try it. Like, I'm all you about the home it. remedies. I tried everything. But your skin looks absolutely amazing, right? But I've come through. So I'll tell you, for those who are wondering what I did for my skin, I did a lot of things. Um, I've tried it all. And not really anything was working for me. Um, literally, when Lenny and I lived together, I tried it all. I had, like, that light at one point. It was, like zapping mm-hmm. my face with mm-hmm. I like did all kinds of, I went to so many different dermatologists I did 
facials. I just spent way too much money doing everything that wasn't working. Um, and so finally I was just like, I don't even know if I gave up or what I did, but I was like really like intentional about like sticking with the same thing. And I remember my mom told my mom was like, the more you do, like the worse it's going to get. Like mm, if you well. keep adding more products, if you keep like buying like face masks at the store, like you just have to be really careful what you put in your skin. And so I started using my mom's line of products, which is like very clean. And I, I always mm. told my mom, like, mom, no, this is not going to clear my acne. Like I remember this, you saying I that. Said, this yeah. only works for people with clear skin. Yeah. And she said, no, Sadie, it actually will clear your acne. You just have to stick mm. with it. So I did. And it did. I also realized I was like super low in uh, vitamin D, which is like just mm. random. But I started taking vitamin D, cleared my skin. Mm-hmm. And um, now though, like I've gotten to the place where my skin is like, like really good. It has like a good yeah. complexion and stuff. Yeah. And I drink a liquid IV every single day. I do too. Do you really? Yeah. And your skin looks yeah. great. And liquid I've IV. I thought it really helps. It actually helps <laughs> my wrinkles really? on my forehead. I've noticed that. I'm like, I feel like what's well, just hydration, but yeah. I feel like it definitely helps. Oh, it yeah. definitely helps. So yeah, and I'm really bad at crazy. drinking water, so I think that helps. And I yeah. love the taste. Yeah, me too. Like this is not an ad <laughs> at all. If you would like to sponsor me, and you're listening. After everything I've said on this podcast, I probably just lost that sponsorship. But I would love to be a sponsor. But no, like, I drink liquid IV every day. And I also wear sunscreen every day. Um, my yeah. honey's pediatrician has a um, skincare line called Refined Beauty. Hmm. Also not an ad. I just like her. And she's really cool. And she did a skincare line. And she has, I use a lot of her products, but her sunscreen, I put it on under. It's a tinted moisturizer hmm. under my makeup, and it makes it glowy. Oh, wow. So, there's some tricks. <sighs> you know, tips, tips. I'm only saying that because I know acne is a huge struggle, yeah. and I mean, it, it is hard. There are just some chores you just don't want to do. I mean, I don't mind doing laundry. I'll do dishes too, but I do not like changing the sheets. And I think by the time we finally go to bed, that's whenever you realize, you know, that's when you need to change them and you're just so exhausted and that's why it's just the worst chore for me. But of course, I want clean sheets and restful peace, so you gotta do what you gotta do. If you can relate, you are going to love Miracle Brand sheets. Christian gets hot when he sleeps with me, Cabo, and sometimes Honey too. We're all piled in the bed and it can get pretty hot. But Miracle Brand self-cooling bed sheets stay comfortable and cool all night long. They even have a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding, such as sheets, pillowcases and comforts that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. So can I get an amen to everybody out there? Um, Just by using their silver infused fabrics originally developed by NASA, Miracle Brand sheets are thermoregulated. So they are designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night. And my favorite part, self-cleaning because the natural silver is what prevents 99.9% of bacteria. This one aspect is actually better for your skin as well because it can help Help prevent acne, allergies, and plus you get a way better night's sleep. Plus, Miracle Sheets are so, so comfortable. They're luxury sheets that we need without the high price tag, which is so awesome. They're also USA grown cotton and one of the highest quality cottons in the world. So do yourself a favor and go to try miracle.com slash woe to try it today. And we got a special deal for woe that's good listeners. So be sure to use my promo code woe at checkout to save 40% off. Y'all that's huge. And you get three free towels. Come on. And Miracle is so confident in their product. It's backed with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you are 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. So you can upgrade your sleep with Miracle Brand. Go to try miracle.com slash woe and use the code woe to claim your free free towels and save 40% off. Again, that's try miracle.com slash woe. Someone asked, what's the biggest personality difference between us? Hmm. Interesting question. I think I, that, Go ahead. Go ahead. You go. I feel like I was actually thinking this this morning because I was thinking about just our friendship and like str- my like our strengths and weaknesses, not yeah. in a bad way, but like yeah. how what makes They're us different. strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking because we were talking about something earlier, and my head went to we can't do it. Yeah. And your head went to well we can do it. Yeah. That's we true. do it all the time. And my I think my. My strength sometimes is like slow slowness. Yeah. Kind of, I can like be. That's true. St- I'm. I, I'll be quicker Patient. to be still and wait yeah. 
whereas I need also the no let's go yeah. like you can do this and I think we kind of like I feel like we balance each other oh, in that yeah, because totally. there have been times where like I feel like I've been like hesitant to do something and I can almost qualify it as like oh I'm praying about it and you're like well just do it you know and I feel like we all kind of like I needed that friend in my life and you've been that way hey, from the beginning I need someone to say you need to pray about that first. take a rest you because know like I'm, yeah I'm not I wouldn't say rash because I am very like I, I think through things but I am yeah. very quick like let's get it yeah. going let's get it done let's yeah. do this fast because I just like to see things move yeah. and I have a hard time being still and you're really good at being still. And but you're really good at moving. Move. Yeah. yeah. So that is really true. That's true. I think another thing that Lainey and I are good at, we're, we're both similar in that we're sixes on the Enneagram. So we're both kind of skeptical of yeah. people, which can be a hard good thing or, yeah. and also a good thing because I think mm -hmm. we're wise about who we open up to, who we don't. But um, one thing I was going to say is you have a little bit more, like, you're good at the heart stuff. Like, you're really good at empathy and compassion, like, heart stuff. And as opposed to I'm kind of, like, mm. too practical sometimes for my mm. own good. And I feel like I'm, like, thinking through things a lot more. Mm. And you kind of bring me towards more, like, soft feelings. Mm. And you help me. Yeah, like, like, do the hard thing. Yes, you like, do. Like, I'm all, like, I'll have a conversational talk and literally leave being, like, that was great, like, that's awesome. Like, we needed that. Yeah. And Lainey was more like, did anybody, like, feeling get hurt? Like, do you think that was okay that I said that? You know? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Like, that was great, you know? So I honestly don't know if I would have stuck out the ending the relationship that I was in, too, before, yeah. if you had not. Wow. I really, like, because wow. I needed somebody to come in with, like, a strength and be yeah. like, no. No. Yeah. And then that that's when I was able to hear hear truth yeah, from good. that point on. So That's good. And this is a good thing to know about friendship, guys, is that, like, when the Bible talks about two are better than one, um, for if, like, one man falls, the other can pick him up. That's why it's so important that it's two individual people, not mm -hmm. two people trying to be the same person. Yeah. That's in marriage, too. It's in friendship. Yeah. It's, like, the differences that you have actually are are a huge strength to the friendship. And that's why you need two people who are different, who are operating in their own strengths mm -hmm. so that it's better than one person. Because if we were both like each other, then if you were mm -hmm. like wanting to be with that guy, I'd be like, well, if that makes you feel good, yeah. then yeah. You know, and yeah. I was like, no way, yeah. shape, or form. Yeah. Are you doing that? You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, I was actually thinking about this. This is like not, I was thinking about this the other day and just like friendship. I didn't know we were going to talk about this, but um I read in Matthew where, like, Jesus is telling the disciples that he is, like, going to be crucified and he's going to raise again on the third day. And Peter, like, tells him, like, no, no, like, yeah. not you. Like, that, that will not happen yeah. to you, you know, and kind of rebukes yeah. what Jesus said. And then Jesus turns to him and says, get behind me, Satan. And I was like, man, like, I when I read that, I was like, I think that's kind of like the flattering friend that we yeah. can all, like, almost— it's easy to fall into because you yeah. love your friends so much. And it's like, oh, I'll just like flatter them in this moment. Yeah. No, no, that wouldn't happen to you. Yeah. But like maybe we're actually steering them away yeah. from like what, supposed what to God has called them to do, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. Um, so I just thought that was really so interesting because it was like yeah. Peter was so close to Jesus in that moment. And yeah. then he's like, get behind me, that Satan. Is, that's so true. I've always been like gripped by that passage because right before that, is whenever Peter is like affirming who he is. It's whenever Peter actually realized who Jesus was. He calls out who Jesus is. And Jesus in return tells mm -hmm. Peter, like, this is who you are. You're going to build the church, all this yeah. stuff. Then Jesus is like, okay, now that we know each other, yeah. let me tell you, like, the hard truth. And yeah. Jesus is like, I'm actually going to get crucified, all this stuff. And yeah. then Peter's like, no, like, yeah. it will never yeah. happen to yeah. you. And then he's like, get behind me, Satan, yeah. because, like, you you have to be willing to do what the Father's going to do. And that's so true. Like, there is that tendency for us to want to just flatter, to want to just go with it because it'll make our friends feel better. Mm -hmm. But, man, to really steer, to really let truth be the basis of your friendship and to steer them to what's best for their life. Mm -hmm. And we've had moments where we've had some hard truth moments yeah. of, like, hey, like, what are you doing? What are you thinking? You know, mm -hmm. all that. Quite um, a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. And someone actually asked, like, <laughs> They said, um, do you guys ever get in fights? How do you move on? <laughs> How do you get to the place to be honest with your friends? That's another question. And I was like, yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. And I actually think that is also why we have such a strong friendship yeah. is because we 
have gotten in some fights. We've gotten into silly mm-hmm. arguments. Like, we used to call each other an old married couple because we'd be <laughs> driving down the road. I'm like, why do you drive like that? Like, just, like, dumb stuff, you know? Or, like, <laughs> clean up your mess. Clean up your yeah. mess. You don't yeah. take the lint off the... What I was know. it? I was just thinking about the, the, oh, the yeah. lint. They never took... Change the lint. The lint. Oh, the dryer. Off the dryer. And I was like, y'all, this is why our clothes don't dry. I, I didn't know. I, I mean, genuinely didn't see, know. See, that's why she needed just the hard truth because did. she just didn't know. I did, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like we had like, but then we also had like big, bigger fights, like literal, like, hey, yeah. like I'm not happy with what you're doing or whatever. And yeah. One of those was around Christian. Like, you yeah. did not want me to date Christian. Yeah. I understood why. Um, not because of Christian, but because of where I was at. Yeah. And we had a like come together, cry it out talk months later. Yeah. And that was really hard. Yeah. Um, how do you move on? I think that, well, I think first of all, like, I think it's good to have fights in your friendship because I think that means you care. Mm. Um, we even had not a fight, but like we had an honest conversation with y'all a few weeks ago, like with something mm-hmm. that Christian did that he needed mm-hmm. to like be honest yeah. with y'all about. Uh, but like, that's okay because mm-hmm. that needed to happen. And yeah. how you move on is you just love people. It's mm-hmm. like family. Like when you fight with your siblings, probably mm-hmm. you might have a fight with your mom, but like you love them so much that you know that nothing that is done in like a fight mm-hmm. or an argument is going to change what you feel about them at yep. the end. And you end it well. I mean, we've never had a fight where we haven't at the end been like, I love you. I'm yeah. for you. I yeah. hear you. Maybe I don't agree with you, yeah. but I, but I'm with yeah. you, you know? Yeah. So I think, you know, you honor each other with your words. You're mm-hmm. careful even in speaking the truth, but you also just love each other yeah. and you just give the grace that you know yeah. each other deserves. And yeah. I mean, that day that we had recently where Christian was upset and we all had this conversation, I mean, like, part of me is just so embarrassed because I'm like, oh, yeah. I hate that that happened. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I know y'all love us so much and now y'all are here. And, mm-hmm. it's okay. and it also makes us closer. Yeah. Like, it was just like a growing moment. I think even with like it as was. couples, it was like, oh, like, not that we've never had that before, but I think that those are sweet moments because yeah. it's like just a reminder of, okay, we're going to talk about stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to hide anything. Yep. You so know, true. we are in it for ever like we're gonna be friends forever and I know that you know it's what makes friends family yeah when you're able to have hard conversations and move on um and that's like how we see y'all like you guys are family like we're saying Ronnie's gonna call me aunt sue and (laughs) sue sue and aunt lulu like it's just family and I don't think that you could call a friend family unless you've open up to them mm, like been family, through you know unless stuff. you've been yeah. through some stuff because you've yeah. been through stuff with your family and so yeah, yeah we we fought yeah we've had um little ones and big ones and we've gotten through it all and yeah. uh, that's what's made us feel like when people yeah. meet us they're like oh like what was y'all's childhood like we're like we literally <laughs> met five years ago you know but at yeah. the time it was like a year ago now yeah. we've known each other for five years yeah which is a blessing we have some time under our belt but it feels like way longer because we've been through so I've much I've been together. through so much more like life things, life. things that will like stay with me forever with you. Like yeah. I was even thinking like even with Clayton, like he's my husband. There are things that you saw me through and yeah. knew me through that he just never will, yeah. you know. Yeah. He knows me in other ways, but like it's just when you have. We had some turning points together. Yeah, we did. Yeah. My life changed, you know. We really did. So fun. <laughs> All right, let's see some other questions that we got. So we did get a question about body image, and I thought that this would be a good one to talk about because, yeah, we joke about we gained so much weight when we were friends, and we did. But that came from a place of actually... Freedom. Freedom. Yeah. And so basically whenever I met Lainey, um, do you care if I tell the fruit story? Oh, I don't care. Okay, no, so no. she had gotten sent to her on Winter Jam a box of, like, chocolate-covered fruit. And she was like, hey, do you want this? And I was like, boy, yeah, but like, you don't want it. Yeah. And you were like, uh, no, like I don't, I don't eat desserts or something. And I was like, this is not dessert. This is fruit covered in chocolate, which is also in my mind. Fruit. Relatively <laughs> healthy. Yeah. And you were like, no, like I haven't eaten sweets for how many years at the time? It had been like, I think like 13, 13 maybe. 13 years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you had like a strong. It was a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and at, well, I think at some points, probably within the 13 years, there was health yeah. in there. But yeah. other times, there was unhealth. Yeah. And I remember I opened up to you about how I was unhealthy in a relationship yeah. that I was in. And um, for several different reasons, was way under eating and way over working out because of some of the comments that this guy had said to me. And yours came from a different place, from childhood stuff. And we both decided we were going to go on a journey of freedom mm-hmm. together. 
and hold each other to that mm-hmm. and we really did yeah and it was a it was it was a beautiful thing mm-hmm. it felt very free mm-hmm. you want to speak to that a little bit i was gonna say and it lasted like yeah, i told did. clayton the other day i have never been more free yeah in my like me- like even just the mental part of it yeah. but like with eating and just lifestyle health like i've never felt more sp- free in my soul about yeah. it i don't think about it yeah. like it's just i'm free yeah. it lasted and i think um i think a lot of that like started that day it was just like i didn't i eat it that day i you ended did. up eating it, ate it yeah together. and i think it just took that first like action step and the reason i wasn't eating it was because in my mind it was like i had struggled with my weight as a child and so i think it was just like oh no what if i what if I chunk up again? What if I, you know, and then that was so tied to even my identity at the time and I got to be fit and I got to be all these things. But I think I've just come, even after being married and having a husband who speaks truth over me and life over me, it reminds me like that he loves me, like just so much more than my body, but just that he loves me and letting that love sink in. I like, I'm so free. Yeah. I'm so free. I feel free to eat and enjoy and, um, even just physically, I think I'm in the best, like, I feel the healthiest. Yeah. yeah. You look healthy. I feel healthy, but it's free. just, like, mm-hmm. it's amazing what um, just law, like, will do. Like, because even with, like, eating, it was always, oh, don't touch that or don't eat that. And the Bible says, like, the strength of sin is the law. And so anything I think we put a law on, we obviously, like, want it more, yeah. you know. But, like, letting God's love and his freedom and, like, mm. the blood of Jesus cover that thing specifically is the only thing that really lasts, totally. you know. Exactly. And I I feel like the blood of Jesus has completely covered that area of my life to where, like, even if I feel a tinge of, like, oh, I can – it doesn't mean I don't hear – I, I yeah. doesn't mean I don't wake up sometimes and my pants don't fit and I'm like oh gosh <laughs> oh no yeah you know but I, I but I come back like the grip of grace and the grip of truth has like held totally. me so much stronger and like it's lasted totally. and I think that's just a testament of God's love and his freedom when he like sets us free mm-hmm. we're so free indeed, indeed. We're free you know indeed. we're so free I love that who the sun sets free is free indeed. yeah and that word is so true like That is so true. It lasted. It was an indeed moment. And I think at first, you know, when we talked about it, yeah, it became like a freedom in what we ate, but it was more than that. It was a freedom in like who we were, you know, Mm -hmm. like we are actually worth a lot more than our body. We're worth more than our image. Our image is actually worth more than even that. Our image is made in Mm -hmm. the image of God. And like who we are is what we need to value and what we need to feed and all that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like that day I was going to eat strawberry covered whatever chocolate but you know yeah. it, was, it was just a lot more than that it was more than the halo top it was more than yeah. the chips and yeah. it was all so much more than that it was the conversations yeah. we are it was the freedom that we yeah. were walking through it was holding each other to that it was mm-hmm. playing basketball yeah. at night as our workout yeah. going to we we did the yeah. dance class like what was that class called uh oh. it was it was kind of zumba but not it was like a hip-hop zumba yeah. it was always it was so funny awesome. okay you want to know how funny it is it was going awesome. to a hip-hop zumba with an actual a hip-hop girl this is what happened <laughs> almost every class they ever joined together they come out to me Lainey they look at Lainey and be like you are so good like oh my gosh like did you do hip-hop in the past all of a sudden they look at me and they say we're so glad you came Stop it. <laughs> every time I'm like dang it I thought I was crushing it but there you go know, you're just actually gifted in that and you worked really hard to, to be so good at that but anyways like it was freedom all around like mentally physically spiritually And yeah, then we walked into relationships with our husbands free. And now, like, yeah, definitely having a husband who speaks that over me is so empowering and so amazing and keeps Mm -hmm. me steady as well. But I love that it happened before we met our men. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't a guy's affirmation Mm -hmm. that made us feel free. It was what we found in the Lord and what we held each other accountable to. And that is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And so girls, like... Maybe it was a guy mm-hmm. that beat you down, you know, with his yeah. words as far as, like, for your health. Maybe it was a childhood wound that beat you down with your mm-hmm. health, whatever. But don't look for that affirmation in a guy or in that in, a, in another girl, like, telling you that you're mm-hmm. awesome or you're fit or you look skinny today. 
But truly mm-hmm. finding that anchored in who God says that you yeah. are and who he created you to be is really going to be the thing that makes you free indeed. That's what says who the sun sets free is free indeed, not who your husband sets mm-hmm. free, who mm-hmm. your, the world yeah. sets free, who your friend sets free, who Instagram yeah. sets free. It's who God sets free is free mm-hmm. indeed. And that's why we sit here today years later and say we haven't had that Mm-mm. spiral again. We haven't mm-hmm. had those thoughts. And yeah, that doesn't mean that the enemy doesn't still lie to you, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, one thing for me after... I had honey was I had like a really bad skin condition breakout. Mm, yeah. And so I started eating gluten free. So I lost a ton of weight. Mm-hmm. And then I was just not feeling good all around. So I just didn't eat a mm-hmm. lot. And then I was working out um, because it made me feel better. And people started getting worried about me. I was like, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm good. Like, I am yeah. so free. Yeah. And so whether it's gaining weight or losing weight, having that mm-hmm. mentality that no matter mm-hmm. where I am on the scale, like I'm just free, man. Yeah. Like I'm not worried about it. This is not my identity. Mm-hmm. This is not my thought pattern. This is not mm-hmm. consuming. I remember when we talked about an eating disorder at the time mm-hmm. and we were like, well, how do you define that? And it was like over excessive thought pattern mm-hmm. about what you're eating. And we were like, well, then I yes. used to plan my day around what yeah. I would eat or not go hang out with people because I didn't want to eat that, you know, to yeah. avoid eating. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. I would wish I didn't have to eat, which is so messed up because God gave us food to, to enjoy and to fuel and to like give our body strength. Yep. And it's great. Yeah. Yep. So good. I'm so grateful for that. Um, also on that note, someone did ask about like, if you're in a verbally abusive relationship with a guy, what to do. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I mean, if you're dating him, I would strongly encourage you to get out of the relationship. Mm-hmm. Verbal abuse mm-hmm. is just as damaging as any abuse. And mm-hmm. those words can be knives <laughs> to yeah. your heart. And, um, yeah. I mean, let him get the help he needs. Um, Don't sit in that. If you are the Mm -hmm. verbal abuser, go get Mm -hmm. the help that you need to work through Mm -hmm. the anger, the rage, or the manipulation in your heart. Um, That is Mm -hmm. a serious situation. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think that Mm -hmm. for me, I would always play it off, well, I mean, he never hit me. But gosh, it felt like he did, you know? Yeah, I didn't even know that mm -hmm. some of it was like, verbal abuse you know I just didn't I didn't recognize it but I think what helped me was getting around people who knew what was true and reminded me what was true Mm -hmm. and also like even if there wasn't somebody at the time around me listening to sermons that were true yeah like I needed like the replacement of what was okay if that's not true well I'm really confused now honestly because you've listened to that so much now let me like go I need I need to listen to some truth and like get that in my mind, in my heart. And it's like when people say, like, you say, oh, this guy's my best friend, you know, Mm -hmm. and all that stuff, because everybody says that whenever Mm -hmm. they're dating somebody. And then if you look at it, you're like, does he actually treat me like any best friend I've ever had has? You're like, no, no, my best friend would never say that to me. And like, yeah. not to say I wouldn't tell you the truth, but no. my best friend would never say it like that. Mm-mm. It would never be that abusive. It'd be you know? love. It and would love. be loving. Yeah. And Christian is my best friend, and he mm-hmm. talks to me like a best friend. Mm-hmm. And like, yes, we've had hard mm-hmm. conversations, but that man loves, loves me, and yeah. he cares for my heart, and he does mm-hmm. not want to hurt it. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, like, mm-hmm. you definitely wait for the man who cares for your That's heart so and who loves it. Yeah, That's so sweet. Yeah. Look at Sadie and Luna you found in our <laughs> princess. Um, okay. Okay, I thought this was a really good one because we actually have some different opinions on this, and I thought Ooh. this would be great um, because I've never talked about this publicly anywhere. Um, but someone said, is it hard for you not to conform to the world drinking style watching the Kardashians? <laughs> Which the Wait, Kardashians, we I mean, watching the Kardashians, I don't even care. Like, if you watch Kardashians, <sighs> Kardashians, that's great. But really, I want to talk to you about the drinking and style. And we don't have different opinions, but like drinking, like you yeah. don't drink. I do sometimes. Yeah. So like yeah. talking about that, because yeah. is it hard for me to not conform to the world? I don't think it's hard for me to not conform to the world because mm-hmm. of how much abundance we have in Christ. Yeah. You know, like... I'm not yeah. tempted by what the world has because I it's have fun. all I need, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I, I know you feel the same yeah. way. Like, yeah. we don't need what the world has. We have more in Him. Yeah. But when it comes to conversations like drinking, we go about it sometimes a different way. Yeah. But we're pretty much on the same page. There's yeah. a different opinion. Yeah. But um, you want to talk about yeah. your thoughts on that? Honestly, my I didn't grow up around it. Yeah. I grew up with a very strong background of like, you know, not my parents, but generations on like drinking was bad. Yeah. And so then it was like, they grew up kind of under that and they've come out of that. And now I think we're at a very like healthy place of it with it. But like, 
for me, it's just not been a something I'm drawn towards. Like yeah. I've tried it, you know, and it's just not really been my thing. I'd rather yeah. have a piece of cake, you know, <laughs> yeah. like for the calories if we're talking about, you yeah. know, just health or something. Yeah. But, um, but I do feel like because there was a little bit of like, it was in hi family history. I've had to kind of like change my mind about it. Yeah. I think as a kid, I would see someone drinking and be like, that's oh bad. my gosh, that's bad, yeah. you know? Or like if my friend's parents were drinking, it yeah. was bad. And I don't feel that way. I think anything yeah. that you're enslaved to, anything that keeps you yep. bondage, it could be, it it's could be donuts funny. for yeah. you. It could be it's too much like Netflix. It could be Instagram. Like it could be literally anything that you attach yourself to yep. And now it's caused you to sin and keep you yeah. from the life that God has for you. Like, that's when it's like, oh, well, it's not good for you. But I, my my biggest issue with drinking now is, like, I don't like it when people push drinks. Yeah. It's like, right. can someone who, you know, someone doesn't eat cake, you're not like, oh, yeah, eat, eat cake, cake, eat the yeah. cake. And you like, but people who drink can sometimes be, you're not this way, but they, sometimes they can be pushy. And I think it's like, you need to let people just... Let it be. Yeah. Like, if it's that big of a deal to you that someone drinks, well, maybe you should yeah. observe why you're drinking, why? Yeah. you know? Why Why is it a big deal? Yeah, I agree. I don't like when people also with drinking, like, I don't like how the mom culture is like, oh, I can't wait to the glass of wine at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, because at the end of the day, like, I don't want to be dependent on, on a that. glass of wine. That's what I'm saying. Me. Yes. Like, I don't want anything to replace what God is yeah. in my life yeah. and so like an idol and like yeah. nothing needs to be an idol like that yeah. you know nothing needs to be like a coping mechanism other than God like yeah like stuff can be done with God like if I yeah. go to the Lord and I'm like hey God like I've had a stressful day like whatever mm -hmm. and get out to Jesus then I happen to have a glass of wine that night yeah great yeah but like it's not like you're that's replacing not what I'm looking yeah. for and I love yeah. how you said like whatever you're a slave to like that's what you need to really look at. Like, what are you in bondage to? Uh, for me, I don't drink often at all because I have seen it in an unhealthy way as well, but mm -hmm. different than you. Mm -hmm. Not in an unhealthy way of like, oh, that's bad, in an unhealthy way of like overuse. And yeah. for me, like knowing that in our family line, there's mm -hmm. alcoholism and like, yeah. I would never want that to happen to me mm -hmm. or never want that to get in the way so I very 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 rarely drink I'll mm -hmm. have a glass of wine on a date with Christian mm -hmm. yeah. or every now and then um with some friends but it's not like a regular thing for me um because that's how I protect my heart mm -hmm. from knowing that um but I'm also not legalistic about it to where I'm like yeah. I'm never gonna do yeah. it because whatever yeah. I just protect my heart and I love yeah. how Levi Lesko said in a podcast recently it's like drink whenever you're happy not like whenever you're sad mm -hmm. because um you know you normally like won't overdo it and you're not looking for that for something it's like a celebration yeah. thing yeah it's kind of the way that I look at it in some sense um but yeah and I have accountability like I've opened mm -hmm. up to you about some of the thoughts I have around it mm -hmm. I've opened up to Christian like mm -hmm. I talk to him about it all the time Christian doesn't mm -hmm. drink at all yeah he doesn't like taste you know yeah, which I don't either. Yeah, but, like, having his accountability. I've opened up to another friend of mine who's always with me, Steph. I'm like, hey, yeah. like, I yeah. never want to get, like, common yeah. with this. And so she's with yeah. me. Like, you know, like, having accountability if you are worried. Like, hey, this runs in my mm -hmm. family. Um, I don't ever want to get to this yeah. point. It's a good thing to open up about. Yeah, and I think accountability is just healthy yeah. in general with anything. Yeah. Anything that anything. you're... You be anything. Just having somebody that is a little bit like you give them, okay, you can speak into my life. Yep. We all need that around us. Yep. So good. Last question. Someone said, did anyone outside of your friendship ever judge your friendship? <laughs> and I put that in there because, yeah. Probably like, a lot of more people. Than, a lot more people than we, we know. know. <laughs> they're judging us right now. They're listening to this and they're like, yep. <laughs> They've already judged us. Um. But yeah, I mean, I think we had a lot of people judge our friendship on like, just people that we were just like so stupid, you know, which we kind of were. I also were. think like looking back, I'm like, we probably were a lot. Oh yeah. For a while. We were. We, we've we really, we really toned it down. Yep. Really I think if you gave us like three back. days together, we might get back we up might. there close. We would get to a dangerous level. We, yeah, but... But yes. Yeah, I mean, people... I mean, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> and I, I'm going to go a step further, assuming that you were probably wondering, do we care? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lady said no. Like, no. We don't care, but we do care. In the sense of, like, 
we do not care that people judge us. It will not change how we act as far as, like, we are still going to be goofy. We are so easy. Yeah. We don't care if you judge us from the outside. Like, if you were, like, Stuff if it like was that. someone, like, on Instagram that was, like, you're not funny, I would be, like, okay, bye. Like, unfollow me. <laughs> like, I mean, like, I don't care. Like, I'm, I am funny, so that's okay. You know, like, that would not bother me. But if it's, like, a friend that has judged us, which we've had, who mm-hmm. thought we were a little bit extra, we yeah. cared. We did care we about did. that. Yeah, we took did it to we, heart. Did we tone it down? <laughs> Maybe we should have. We should have. A little bit. Maybe a and little. And that could have been more honoring of the yeah, situation. Yeah, I think so. Hindsight. I've gone back and apologized to yeah. one person yeah. that I knew. And that's yeah. good. And it was really good, and we're very close now. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I wanted to put that in there because I'm like, yes, yes. and we did, we did acknowledge that. And we could have toned it down. And we also could have been more inviting. Like, Mom. I agree. We could have been more inviting. Yeah. Because I think whenever you're so close with someone, it's very easy to just, like, Get, reference yeah. everything to them or, like, inside joke. And, like, that's not cool to do in front of a lot of people. Yeah. You know? It was hard not to do because we were so close. Yeah. But I still think being respectful of everybody else in the room and making sure if you're going to do something funny or, like, tell a joke, mm-hmm. like, make sure it includes everyone in the room. Mm-hmm. Like, that's, like, a really... I agree. That's yeah. just a gracious thing to do. I mean, that's community. Mm-hmm. It's, like, not being built on one person, being built on community. Yeah. And then, uh, but if someone judges you outside of your group who's just, like, thinks that you're dumb, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, I think you like, just have to ask yourself, is their opinion one that you value? Yeah. And, like, um, you know... I, I saw this video on Sadie and Laney. We had an Instagram account <laughs> called It's Sadie and Laney. We do. We, we do. do. We're actually going to revive it. So get ready. We might have already revived it by the time yeah. this comes out. Yeah. But um, so if you're already a follower, thank you for sticking with us for the past uh, yes. two thank years you. of darkness. Thank you. But I was laughing because, first of all, all of the videos are just two best friends being crazy. But I was laughing so hard because we were getting unfollowed by people. I know. And, but we made so a sad. video about it. And we were like, because we called everybody cousins because, like, the K, like, 40K, like, 40 cousins, we were dumb. And we were like... Well, while we've been off the gram, we have seen that we've lost some cousins, and that is not what family does. I was like, I can't believe we called them out like that. That is hilarious. It's really funny. I agree. That is so funny. funny. Well, lady, it's been fun chatting like we always do, but with cameras around and a microphone. Um, And for those who listen, I hope that, you know, you laughed because that is a big part of friendship. And being sisters and friends is laughing and being goofy. But also I hope that you were inspired and encouraged. And yeah. I hope that, one, obviously Lainey preaches truth. And she pulled out some scriptures and gave you all good truth. And I think we gave you all some good advice, too. But I also hope that you can just listen to this and let the relationship in itself speak to your life. Maybe you can model some friendships off of the structure that we've been able to build. Have we done it perfect? No. But we're pretty, mm-hmm. pretty willing to admit the times that we yeah. haven't. And thank you for the questions that you asked. I think, Lainey, you'll have to be a regular on this podcast. <sighs> Um, I feel like so a bestie honored. is a requirement of being on the Sisters and Friends podcast regularly. So if you enjoyed this conversation, let us know. Um, and please, please keep asking us questions. DM, do whatever, um, because we would love to answer more. Even if you want to send it to It's Sadie and Lainey. Yes. Um, we'll try to revive that page. We don't live in the same place anymore, which is hard, and that's why we don't do the page mm-hmm. anymore, just because we don't live in the same place. And we have kids, and we're married, it's a little bit harder. But, uh, man, our hearts are still so for <laughs> each other and what each other's doing. And we're still pretty goofy under all the all the facade. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. This is awesome. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>